and here we go. We're going to start by using a light cobalt blue in the luminance pencil to work the iris layer by layer. I'm going to start building up my values of layers, uh, working back and forth between um, the light cobalt blue, the middle cobalt blue, and then I will use a violet to get the outside of the iris um, and also work in some of the darker shadows so that it's more of a warmer color. It's not just flat like the black. Here you're going to see that I'm trying to use the uh, powder blender by brush and pencil and due to the fact that this is a wax based pencil it's not working very well. Uh, the brush and pencil product powder blender works much better with uh, polychromos or let's say a Caran d'Ache Pablos which is more of an oil based pencil. But I thought I would give it a try seeing this is an experiment to see what works and what doesn't with a sanded paper. So I'll let this play through. All I'm doing here is building up my layers of color and continuously trying to blend them out. So I'll be right back with you. I'm just going to go ahead and keep working the layers uh, layer by layer and then continuously trying to blend with the powdered blender. Like I said, it's an experiment, so I thought maybe if I give it a try, uh, maybe I could get it to blend out. Um, you'll see later in the video uh, where it really doesn't work that well. So I switch over to OMS, which is an odorless mineral spirits, which does help melt the wax down into the tooth of the paper, which makes it work really well. But you'll see that later on in the video. Here I'm just adding the white, um, putting in a, what they call a dead layer that actually basically locks that color down underneath and allows me to build up more values over top of it. So I put that layer down, added the pupil. Here I'm going to start using uh, blending with OMS like I said. I'm going to start uh, melting the wax down into the iris uh, to blend these colors together. You definitely have to work uh, lighter to dark this way because it will pick up the darker values and bring them down into your color, which you really don't want to do. Uh, that does make it kind of difficult to deal with, but as long as you always remember to use light to dark instead of dark to light, you'll be just fine. I'll let this play through and I'll be back with you. Now I'm going to start adding more layers now that that OMS is completely dry. I gave about 10 or 15 minutes or so and then that was completely dry and I was able to go back over it. Um, you can take the OMS while it's still rather wet on the paper and use a wax based pencil or even an oil based pencil over it and it'll almost act like it's being painted on. So here I'm going to uh, melt the wax again from the luminance pencils, uh, Caran d'Ache luminance. This right here is the touch-up texture fixative, uh, or just the touch-up texture from brush and pencil. And what I'm doing is locking the iris down, so then that way once it's dry and if I happen to brush over it, nothing will happen. Using the titanium white here to get the eyeball area and some colored pencil powdered blender again to try and smooth this back out. And what I did find is that it's not working like I thought it would work due to the fact that these luminance pencils are kind of chalky, uh, real chalky wax. So all it did was ended up pushing it around. So you'll see me continue to try this throughout the, throughout the procedure and it doesn't work. So I eventually end up switching over to strictly OMS. Here I'm just building up the eyeball area because we all know that eyes aren't completely white, the eyeball area. And using some titanium white to bring that a little bit brighter. And then again I tried to use the powder blender which didn't work, so then I switched over to OMS once again. I just continued to try different procedures with a product to see what worked best and I always leaned back to the OMS. As you saw there I took the white pencil while it was still wet and basically just went in and uh, melted that white onto that.
Here I'm just going through and starting to build up around the eye, the eyelid, um, and also where the eyelashes are. I need to get those eyelashes set so then that way once I work around them or underneath them or over top of them, they'll be set into the paper, into the tooth of the paper. Get some little uh, defining areas and then I use the OMS to come back in here and melt that wax or that pencil right down into the tooth of the sanded paper. Um, this is UART, uh, UART 600 sanded paper in the natural color. I'll have links to everything that I used in the description below so there'll be no doubt on what I used from the paper to the OMS to the brush and pencil products and um, even the luminance pencil colors that I was using. Doing the bottom of the eye trying to create my depth uh, with the different hues of the browns that I'm using. Using like a, let's see here, about six different uh, stages of brown. Uh, they'll all be listed in the description that you can see. And you'll see me here a couple times I'll try and go in there with the brush and pencil you see there all it does is just push the wax around it doesn't blend like I wanted it to I uh, tried in vain no matter what and being such a waxy base they just just would not blend in the 600 paper mind you I didn't have a whole lot of layers down I probably should have had I don't know eight to ten layers down and built up all my values but uh, this was an experiment so just lots of fun trying different things uh, along doing this eye. So I'll let this play through a little more and I'll get back to you. Right there I took a little bit of the titanium white to kind of get my highlight areas that I want to uh, have underneath the eyebrow. And this is where I come back in with the OMS to really melt the wax down into the tooth of the paper. Uh, keep in mind that the OMS that's on the brush, there is not that much on the brush, even though in the video here it does seem like there is a lot. There really isn't a lot on there. What I did was got the brush wet, a little flat brush, and scraped it off as much as I could onto the side of the container and then just started blending it out. When it got really dry on the paper, then I added a little more, uh, just dabbing areas that I wanted to get wet. Then I was able to go back in. And here the, the paper is still a little bit damp, so I went back in to kind of blend things together, uh, kind of melt that wax together on top of what I already had down, and then I just continue working the different values of layers. As you see here, what I'm doing is basically glazing with the color pencil um, very lightly, just blending underneath with a side-to-side -side motion uh, so I'm not pushing too far down into the paper, and then I can come back with the OMS and blend that out. I apologize for the lawn mower. It decide, he decided to uh, mow the lawn of the apartment complex I live in. Well, I'm doing this, so unfortunately nothing I can do about that. So... We're going to start working, getting the definition around the eyelid, uh, creating the depth by using uh, the different hues. And I'll let this play through, and you can continue to watch, and I'll be back. Little OMS right there. And I'm using the small brush here just for the sole fact it's a lot easier to get into these smaller areas. Um, and the large brush again, blending that back out. And you can see the wax edge where it, it literally just stops right on the paper. Uh, if there's nothing underneath it, it's not going to blend out very well unless you put quite a bit of OMS on it, which you really don't want to do because it takes a lot longer to dry. Um, and you can end up pushing the wax and creating uh, things that you really didn't want to do. So I'll let this play through.
using a white to get that little bit lighter in that area where I wanted to create the definition in the eye. And I'll come back and this is where I start really working in some of the smaller, finer details, a little bit at a time. Um, going back, darkening up some of the pupil area around the areas where on the iris that I wanted to get a little bit darker. And this is where you start defining everything. A little bit at a time here and there. You'll see me move back and forth around the drawing using different colored pencils. All I'm doing is just spending some time to get the little areas, little nuances that really add up. To get your eye, uh, give it a dimensional look, you have to spend quite a bit of time creating those little reflections like you saw me doing. That is what actually really makes the eye stand out um, and kind of softening up the edge here. I don't want that edge to be super hard. Uh, that does, it creates a uh, almost like a two-dimensional look when it's, it's too hard on the edge. So I just soften things up. I'll come back in here to the eyeball area and I'll use some OMS to blend that out, to smooth it out so it doesn't look so ragged like you see it there. I'm just getting my, getting my colors in there and defining some edges so I don't lose them. And then I'll come back in with the OMS and blend this all out. Here I come back in with that smaller brush just because I'm getting in between the eyelashes. I want to kind of keep things pretty tight here so I don't have to go back over them again. Um, this is just, all this is is just refinement. Uh, we'll come in and refine areas. You see I'm dragging some of that color back down, wipe my brush off. Because this will pick up the wax on your brush. So if you were to take uh, some of the brown and put it back into the white, it will drag that right back into the white. I'm working on the eyebrow here. Uh, the image that I got for this was from a redheaded woman. And she had, uh, like a, I guess being a redhead, she had more of a reddish or a, a rust colored kind of eyebrow or eyeshadow that she was wearing. So I'm coming back in and lay down the, the eyebrow, the shape of the eyebrow, and go back in. And I'm, I'm notorious for seeing things while I'm in the middle of doing something else. So I'll come back and tweak little things. And then I'll go back up with the eyebrow with some OMS um, and blend that down so that uh, I get a nice base underpainting, let it dry for a few minutes, and then I can come back and work on it. But here I saw the eyelashes were kind of getting lost, so I went back up and started you know, defining them, bringing them back out so that it made everything else stand out. Here's where I take the, the OMS, create a little bit of a overcast I guess you would say or a little bit of part of the the uh, eye over top um, the bone structure so that that makes sense on why the eyebrow is sitting there without anything above it now working on the bottom I'll work that let that dry and then go back in and start laying down the individual hairs in a sense um, letting that lighter area shine through the hair on the eyebrow and then the light the way the lighting was coming in this picture uh, used a, a much lighter shade. Now here you'll see me using uh, the brush and, uh, brush and pencil powder blender. Here it actually starts to work the fat because I'm using uh, this soft tool. You can buy this and like I said, I'll have all the information below in the description box. And then I'm taking some titanium white, just bringing this back in, kind of lighten up the areas that the reflections coming off of the skin. Blend it in a little bit with my finger. That's pushing it back down in. And now that the tooth is filled from using the OMS, it actually works a little bit better. Not as well as I'd hoped like with an oil-based pencil, but it did work nonetheless. So now I take the small paintbrush and the titanium white and there's a highlight on the eyelid 
and a highlight just on the right of the eye. So I brought those back with a titanium white. Go back and clean up a lot of the area around the eye. And then I'll come back in and define, start defining the eyelid area itself. You'll see me start to use that soft tool quite a bit on edge, and the reason I do that is that it, it, uh, it's able to blend a smaller area. Um, it's really great because that tool works to uh, blend areas that I couldn't get otherwise. A paintbrush wouldn't really work for that. So I use that, and it has interchangeable tips, which work great if I'm going to use a dark color and a light color. I can just switch them out, or I can just use, you know, I have multiple of, multiple uh soft tool blenders like that so I can use one for dark and one for light uh, works great just fantastic I'm glad I invested in them and you'll see I added a little bit of texture up to the top right of the eye and the reason I did that is it gives the depth helps create the depth of the eye uh, and some of the skin tone um, some of the skin tone texture that you would see normally on a close-up picture all I'm doing here is going back and defining the eyelid um, again, I apologize for uh, my landlord um, out there mowing the lawn. I didn't know he was going to do this when I recorded this, but hopefully it doesn't become too bothersome. And all I'm doing here is just going back in and creating the final touch. Here I'm adding the uh, highlights using the titanium white mixed with uh, the touch-up texture from the little bottle. All I did was take a pan pastel lid, um, mix the two together very very little doesn't take much at all uh, it dries up really fast and just added that to the areas and come back in with a white pencil and touch up little areas that I couldn't get uh, as white as I wanted which you can with a titanium white all you have to do is just let it dry uh, mix up a little bit more and come back and do it again I apologize for the the video changing uh, different has a different lighting to it um, I don't know if it was the ambient light in my uh, studio area, if it kept changing because I was shooting this over multiple hours. Uh, it took about three hours to complete this, so I just thought I would let you know that that's why it seems like it's changing color on you. This is actually more uh, the, the actual what I see compared to the bright lighting that you saw earlier in the video. And remember, if you like this video, you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Also hit the little bell if you want to be notified of when new videos are uploaded. I want to say thank you. Uh, this is Mike from Michael S. Bell Fine Art and hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Uh, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, um, and share with friends that also would like to learn.